In this episode, we learn uh, that Lewis and the Shishigumi are losing business and money because somebody is stealing, eating meat, and elephant tusks, and apparently that is a source of income for them. And we also see Lugosi continuing to train with Gohin, um, and who teaches him to start like strategically fighting since he is going through some physical changes, um, having cut out meat, um, they're kind of going through those things. I did find it interesting that Gohin's ideas of justice are not turning in carnivores. Like they didn't really like carnivores who have eaten herbivores. Mm-hmm. They didn't go into it too much or like exactly where his like cutoff line is for turning people in. But I thought it was really cool to see him as an herbivore, you know, kind of understanding that car- it, not everything is easy for carnivores and kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt sometimes. I don't know. What were your thoughts on that, Koo? Uh, I thought it was fine. I just couldn't get over the fact that pandas are apparently carnivores. If, uh, I always thought that pandas were herbivores because of the yeah. whole bamboo thing. Yeah, they only eat bamboo. Well, then how is this panda guy a carnivore then? He's not. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, because... I'm, okay, so I'm, maybe I'm messing up, but I remember there was like a statement that he made that made it seem like uh, he actually ate meat once, and that's why like he's kind of like enforcing his own justice by not turning in these carnivores and kind of just like you know like implementing his own justice, right? Like he's gonna uh, like recondition them to be okay to fit with the world of carnivores and herbivores. So I think I know what line you're talking about, and it kind of threw me for a loop too. But I think it was just kind of a weird translation. I think. Right. So. Uh, Okay, so yeah, maybe that was my bad. But, uh, and I mean, I totally respect the guy. Uh, although I guess realistically, I can't agree with what he's doing, but uh, in an anime sense and for just um, like in aspects of just someone's morale and their way of thinking, I kind of would agree that that's probably the best way to have the world unify and become a better place in a sense rather than just imprisoning whoever and giving them no chance of like uh, repenting or redeeming themselves as a person. So, yeah, because I mean, this doesn't really seem like in most, in most carnivores cases, it really doesn't seem like it's a matter of, Oh, they just don't care about herbivores. They just want to go around and kill them and, and eat them all. It really seems like there's a lot of these accidental things that occur. Um, and really just some um, like behavior therapy and like other stuff could really go a long ways. Mm-hmm. Rather than just straight turning somebody into the police and like ruining their whole life, you know? Right. Anyway, so after that scene, then Tao goes to visit Kibi in the hospital. So the panther goes to visit the anteater in the hospital. And it was really cute. I was devastated by Kibi losing his arm. It was just horrifying to watch. I've never forgotten it since then. And so to see Tao go and visit him and Kibi forgive Tao for what happened because he said that, um, you know, Tao probably went through a really hard time too beating himself up over it i thought that moment was really great i teared up a little bit i love them (laughs) that's all right it's not like his arm is gone for good they were able to reattach it so yeah 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 i know but i think i do think that he would have forgiven him even if he didn't get his arm back (laughs) no that was my right arm that's my good arm (laughs) uh maybe maybe i guess we'll have to see if it ever happens to me in real life okay fingers crossed yeah but yeah, no, I get it. I was like, yeah, this this whole episode was just a heartwarming episode. And then especially with the scene that follows afterwards, like yes. just when you thought this the episode couldn't get any more heartwarming, like the next just the wags his tail. Oh my god. Yeah. So uh so basically, um I don't see they never went into it, so I'm kind of confused. Hopefully they'll they'll mention it next episode. Mm-hmm. Uh but apparently Lagoshi was caught as a culprit, uh as the one that was like still in the meat and the um uh, and the, the elephant tusk mm-hmm. but apparently his partner <laughs> ran away so i don't know if that was like uh uh like the panda sensei running away but i don't think that would be the case right i don't think he would just leave lugosi behind like that i think he maybe just got framed or he got kidnapped or whatever and uh i was after he fought the, that that bird and the cheetah i think it was i thought it was after them didn't one of them escape and they like the no he the... got the Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. So he, but then if I remember correctly, he caught both of them and then they went back to like the, like the panda uh, place and then they had that talk and that one client came in for more medication mm-hmm. and yeah. whatever. So I think that was after they had that showdown. So mm-hmm. I don't think that was right after that. It must have been like some, sometime further along, unless okay. like they're just 
like lapping these scenes over each other and the, the time frame isn't um, done well, I guess. Uh, but no, I think it was like sometime afterwards and then apparently Lugosi just got captured uh, mm-hmm. by the... What was the name of the group again? Shishigumi? Shishigumi. I keep wanting to call them Shiganshina from like Attack on Titan, but it's right. Shishigumi. <laughs> Yeah, and then apparently because he shaved himself, thank God, uh, they didn't notice that he was the wolf boy that you know came and fucked him up in the first place. And now that Lewis is the leader, he came to go see who the culprit was, and it turns out it was Lugosi. And like Lugosi being the good boy that he is, right? Like his tail is wagging nonstop because he was so That's happy to see boy. Lewis. Yeah, and then like even after all that, right? And Lewis and Lugosi has a one on one, and he's like, "Yo, you're so back, man." Like I wanted, I need a partner. Like you're the only guy that could ever like see me as who I am. You gave me the strength uh, to to be who I am today. And like he's trying to convince him to come back to school because they need him. Uh, he lets him know that you know we we found a guy who uh, who ate him. Like there was just so much going on, and you're hoping that maybe Lucy can kind of convince Lewis to come back. Um, mm-hmm. But this is where like they stand their ground, right? Like Lewis mm-hmm. can never come back, but Lugosi mm-hmm. is doing this because he wants to be the shining light. He wants to be able to protect his his friends and urban warriors and whatnot. So mm-hmm. this is where they they split off. But uh, yeah, it was it was such a feel good episode. And uh, oh man, it was it was it was a good episode. I don't know how else to explain. I kind of wish that they would talk more about the story and some of the background. But I guess we'll have to settle with this for this week. Dude, I was just so, so, so scared when, like, when Lugosi first gets thrown in front of Lewis, and Lewis is like, this piece of shit lying mother, um, like, I thought he was a good guy, but he's been doing all this stuff. I was so scared that, like, Lewis was going to be misunderstanding mm-hmm. Lugosi for, like, a while. I didn't think that that misunderstanding would get turned around within minutes, so I was so relieved when it did, and then Lugosi just threw himself into Lewis's arms with the cutest little hug. Oh, I love that. Um... I think it's just like, yeah, there wasn't like that much like plot per se, but like because there's just so much emotional investment in these characters, it I didn't really care. It just it just felt like a huge moment. Mm-hmm. Um and then of course like OC um at the end he he made he like he whispered to Lewis like what you said, you know, I still need you here, you know, you really need to come back, that kind of thing. And he basically Aladdin off, off of the balcony, so hopefully he's okay <laughs> there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, thank God he's been training because, yeah, he gave up his jaw power uh, or his, mm-hmm. in, in, like, uh, carnivore instincts or whatever uh, mm-hmm. to just be a lot stronger physically with his, his body, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like, for CGI, the, the fight scenes in the alley, uh, you know, the fight scene here when he took out those those guards and was able to escape, like, it was actually mm-hmm. really smooth. So Yes, it was. Yeah, you get to see, like, his training payoff, and then obviously mm-hmm. he's only going to get stronger because he still has to fight, uh, what was it, Rez, the, the, the brown bear? Yeah, Rez. Oh, my God, Rez right. is a super freaking creep at the <laughs> end there. Oh, my God, when he was talking about how carnivores just need to control their emotions. Right. They can't let themselves get out of control, and he's going to go visit Kibi in the hospital, too. What a psychopath! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucked up. But you know, that's what happens when Winnie Pooh is, you know, has that honey. You know, he's able to contain himself for a little bit. And then, you know, if he doesn't have honey anymore, he just goes ape shit. Um, ass beady eyes are just like so oh, I can't I don't like Riz. I think that yeah. they were trying to set him up to be at least somewhat like empathetic character or relatable or something where you could at least understand where he was coming from and he's not just all out evil, but Man, those dead eyes just don't do a whole lot in his defense for me. I mean, if I didn't know he was a killer bear, I would assume he's innocent. Because when you look at his face, you would assume he's like a cuddly (laughs) bear, you know? So definitely not threatening. Uh, But hey, I guess that's just a sign of a good killer, I suppose. You know, that that poker face, I guess. But But the episode was bookended with another... Well, I felt it was kind of a cute, heartwarming moment at the end where... um, um peanut like yep. interjects himself in between lugosi and riz mm-hmm. and diffuses the tension lugosi had broken the light because he was so pissed off listening to riz talk and and uh peanut just comes in and he's like okay that's all right lugosi's gonna pay for this light and nothing to see here we're all good to go and then they, that little chat that they had at the end i thought was nice too i'm really trying to figure out exactly where pina's character is going i don't really know exactly what he wants but he's very good at bringing down the the tension <laughs> He is. I want to say he's probably like Lewis 2.0 because uh, mm. obviously when uh, Lugosi was talking with his uh, his Panda Master, uh, he was referring 
to Lewis as like his partner, right? Like he can't do it himself. He needs someone there to kind of back him up uh, emotionally. And it looks like Pina's kind of there to fill a role without him knowing it. And since Lewis isn't coming back anytime soon, I think that's what Pina's there for in a sense. Just emotional support for Lugosi while he's going through all this. And yeah. as of right now, he's doing a really good job because he's been helping out Lugosi. What? Twice. This is the second time or third time he's helping third him out? Third time, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he's a nice, uh, nice fill-in for now. But uh, depending on how they portray his character, I feel like we might just be, or I might just be, uh, not give him enough credit. So I, I guess we'll see how uh, his character plays out later mm. on. Yep. The only other note that I have for this episode is I feel a little bit anxious about, and I don't know if I should, but I felt a little bit anxious when Lugosi was telling Lewis that he thinks that Haru is waiting for Lewis to come back. Um, I really feel like Lugosi and Haru need to have a longer conversation and figure out what each other is thinking before making such claims, but I don't know if that will come back. I feel like years of watching, like, you know, dramas and stuff like that has made me think that some, a more dramatic moment will come from that, but it might not. <laughs> Uh, it might. I mean, I don't know. I still think Haru's kind of a bitch, but that's just my point of view. Please don't hate YouTube, you know, Twitch or whoever. Um, the but, next 21. Right. But yeah, I, I hate Haru so much, but it is what it is. You know, hopefully something comes to light later where I myself would like her more. But as of right now, I, I hate her character. But it's all, heard... about, it's all about the bromance between Lewis and Lugosi. That's all I got to say. That's, that's what that... keeps me in. Haru gets a little bit more development and you learn a little bit more about what she's thinking. I don't know, but that's just what I've heard. Cause I, I'm I don't dislike her as much as you do, but mm -hmm. especially this season, I have no I haven't had any issues with her this season. Um mm -hmm. but I didn't love her either, and that was the feedback that I got. So mm -hmm. we'll okay. see. Yeah, I'll see what happens. But again, it's all about that bromance. Man, these it's pretty nice. Oh it's so good. <laughs> so good. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> 